kidushim tihiyu, ki kadosh ani Hashem Eloheichem. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. This week we arrive at the halfway point of the annual Torah reading cycle. Many commentators consider Parshat Kedoshim to be not only the central part of the Torah in a literal sense, but also the central part or heart of the Torah in terms of its meaning as well. Because it is in this Parsha that God calls upon us to be holy, to strive to live a life that is imbued with holiness. This section of the Torah, known as the Holiness Code, contains many of the loftiest ethical statements, including the verse, Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But holiness is more than simply about liking other people. According to Rashi, the Hebrew root kadosh, kuf, dalad, shin, means separated, set apart, made special, we are supposed to strive to set ourselves apart from the ordinary, from the mundane. We are supposed to strive to rise above the animal instincts that lurk within us. One of the mitzvot of Parshat Kedoshim that epitomizes this sentiment, the idea of rising above our animal urges, is lo ta'amod al dam re'echa. Following the Rambam's understanding, Maimonides, these Hebrew words should be translated as follows. Do not stand idly by while a fellow human being's blood is being shed. Or, if you prefer, do not stand idly by and do nothing while a fellow human being's life is in danger. According to the Rambam in Hilchot Rotzeach Ushmirat Nefesh, Anyone who has the ability, the capacity to save a person's life and does not save him is violating the prohibition of standing idly by. And so too with someone who sees his friend drowning in the sea or robbers coming upon him or an evil beast coming upon him. He cannot stand idly by. He is responsible to stand up and do something to prevent that friend from drowning, to prevent that person from being robbed, to prevent that person from being hurt by an evil beast. On May 25, 2020, an evil beast named Derek Chauvin came upon a fellow human being named George Floyd. While arresting Floyd, who was suspected of using a counterfeit $20 bill to buy cigarettes at a grocery store in Minneapolis, the police officer knelt on Floyd's neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds. Nine minutes and 29 seconds after he was handcuffed and lying face down and repeatedly calling out for help, saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Earlier this week, on Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, Chauvin was convicted of murder and manslaughter. The jury found Chauvin guilty of three charges this conviction was a watershed event in American history that God willing, Emir Tzashem, will mark the reversal of a trend for police officers to get away with murder. The murder of black men and other incidents of police brutality and racism. According to Jewish law, rooted in the verse from this week's Parsha, Lo Ta'amod al Damreacha, Chauvin was not the only guilty party in the murder of George Floyd. There were three other Minneapolis cops at the scene who might have been able to do something to prevent this senseless death. Thomas Lane, J. Alexander Kong, 
and Tu Tao all face charges of aiding and abetting second degree murder and manslaughter. Mr. Kong checked George Floyd's pulse during the arrest, but did not move or seek medical assistance after not finding a pulse. While Mr. Lane, to his credit, did initially question Chauvin's tactics and suggest rolling Floyd on his side, he took no actions to further assist after George Floyd repeatedly expressed discomfort and distress. Now, one could claim, as Lane's defense attorney undoubtedly will, that you can't expect a rookie cop to stand up to a veteran police officer who was training him. It will be up to a jury of peers to determine Lane's fate, as well as that of the other two officers, at a trial that is set to begin this summer. But we know what Jewish law has to say about this, based on our verse in Parshat Kedoshim. We also know what Jewish law has to say about the bystanders who did not stand idly by and who actually did attempt to save George, George Floyd's life. Unfortunately, to no avail. Rather than walking away, there were several onlookers who repeatedly shouted out that Floyd was not responsive and who urged the officers to check his pulse. Darnella Frazier, the teenage girl who witnessed the events with her nine-year-old cousin and made the most widely seen video documenting what happened that day. She testified on Tuesday as one of the key witnesses for the prosecution. But although Frazier and some of the other bystanders did try to get Chauvin to get off of George Floyd by screaming at him and the other officers, their words were not enough. As Frazier herself tearfully admitted to the jury this week, she stays up at night apologizing to George Floyd for not doing more and not physically interacting, not saving his life. God willing, none of us will have to face the kind of situation that Darnella Frazier and the other passers-by had to face on May 25th, 2020 in Minneapolis. But if, God forbid, chas v'chalila, we should face any situation when a fellow human being is in trouble, may we all be inspired by this week's Parsha, Parshat Kedoshim, to do the right thing, thereby bringing Kedusha, holiness, into our lives and into the world. Ken Yehi Shabbat Shalom.